Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Lisa and I welcome you to my 33rd career coaching drop-in session. Yay! So number 33 is something that we call in German Schnapszahl. So basically it's um, Schnaps is a little shot that you take. <laughs> so when you turn 33, for example, 44, 55, whatever, it's supposed to be that you are drinking a little shot. So that's not what I'm doing, but I can give you a little hint of a very healthy shot that you can take, which is called a ginger shot. So you can take that in the morning or in during the day, and then it helps you boost your immune system. So that's the shot that I'm going to take today. <laughs> it doesn't contain any alcohol. So, well, welcome to this session. My name is Lisa, and as you know, I'm also called Job Coach Germany. And today's topic is all about the CV again, or what we call Lebenslauf in German, or what some people also refer to as resume. So there are three terms that are really confusing. And some of you have asked me to clarify this topic and what the differences actually are between these different terms. And that's why I want you to listen really carefully and take notes so that you are aware what the companies here in Germany are actually expecting of you when you are sending your application documents to them. But first, let me um, just announce one more little thing. So on uh, Tuesday, the 29th of June, I am offering a free masterclass on how to get invited to a job interview here in Germany again. So feel free to sign up through the link in my bio for that if you are interested and come along and learn all the different little tweaks and highlights of the job application process that are important for you to know in order for you to really land that dream job of yours here in Germany. And really get invited to a job interview because obviously that's the first step right the first step is to get invited to a job interview to showcase what you can do for the company okay so and that's why i would um highly recommend for anybody that is interested in moving to germany coming to germany living here relocating to germany to participate in that particular masterclass that I'm offering on the 29th of June at 5 p.m. German time. So it is happening via Zoom and you can sign up through my website. Anything else? It's a Tuesday. So I'm looking forward to anyone that is joining us. But let's get back to the topic of today. So today's topic is all about the different terms, CV, resume and Lebenslauf. So Let's start right from the beginning, okay? So a CV is a short version of, um, okay? So it's a short version of curriculum vitae. And curriculum vitae is the Latin form for Lebenslauf. And Mojo is here, hi, thanks for joining me here today. So, however, in the English speaking world, so when you're applying in America or when you're applying in England, in Great Britain, for example, you would come across the terms CV or resume. So thank you so much for all the hearts and thank you so much for the support. I greatly appreciate that. So in today's session, we're talking about the differences between a CV, a resume and a Lebenslauf. Um, so this might be interesting to some of you who are thinking about applying in America, in England, in Great Britain, compared to wanting to apply here in Germany or in the German speaking region. Yeah, Some, so the region that we call DACH, which is um, a short version for Germany, Austria and Switzerland. And um, we will dive right into the topic, all the different um, aspects of ACV, of a resume and of a Lebenslauf. I know that I've covered this topic before. However, um, one of my clients came to me and approached me and said, what are exactly the differences between these? So I think I talked about the differences between the CV and Lebenslauf already. So what you need to include in your CV when you're applying abroad, 
and what you need to include in your Lebenslauf when you're here in Germany and applying for a company here in Germany. But um, we will dive more into detail in with regards to this topic. So let's first take a look at the difference between a resume and a CV. So the resume is something that is shorter and it's um, considered a one page document. And it's a one page document that is supposed to be used to apply for a job in, yeah, just basically in the industry rather than in research fields. And for example, when you are applying for a job in just any sort of company that you are interested in that is working in the non-research or um, non-scientific area, then you would use a resume. The reason behind that is that the people that are recruiting you don't want to spend too much time on going through all of your documents. So a one page document is something that they're looking for. If you extend that one page up when it's asked for a resume, specifically in non-scientific jobs, then you will be out. So people in the industry don't have a lot of time. They don't want to spend a lot of time on screening all of the uh, the application documents, which is why the resume is a one pager. They go through that and find out a and get a get the highlights of your career. Okay, whereas the CV is more, um, yeah, designed towards scientific jobs. So academic jobs that are in the research field. Yeah, anything that is uh, related to science when you, for example, applying for a university or you are, for example, applying with a company that is actively working in research and researching specific topics in your field, that's when you are going for a CV. And the CV is a little bit longer. So from my experience and what I have read and uh, researched when it comes to CVs in the academic field, especially in the United States, then it can happen that a CV extends even three pages. It can, it can go up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, or if you're a professor, 10 pages. Yeah, and that is the reason behind that is that you have a lot of publications and a lot of research that you are involved with and you want to showcase that. And that is something that is really, really typical when you're, for example, applying abroad. Now, getting back to what you all are looking for, a job in Germany, this is something that we don't do, okay? And Felix is here as well. Hi, Felix, thanks for joining. Um, so when you are applying for a job here in Germany, even if you are applying in English, yeah, because sometimes we ha do have companies here in Germany that are offering English speaking jobs. However, always keep in mind you are in the German on the German labor market. OK, so what you want to be doing is to adjust your Lebenslauf, the German version. Yeah, so the English translation would be the CV. But according to the German standards, which means we don't extend two pages, okay? So on the rare occasion, really, really rare occasion, if you're, for example, a professor at a university and you're applying for a professor position in um, at the university, that's when you can maybe use three pages. However, the third page is basically only for your publications, yeah? But this is really rare. The people that I work with are no professors normally, and they are really rarely working at universities. However, that basically means that you want to stick to the two pages. Even better would be just a one pager, right? But German Lebensläufe are really used to having two pages, for example. So you can also um, see it kind of like that. If you are working with a resume, you're using a resume, it's kind of like a summary of everything on one page, but the CV is a little bit more extended. And that's what I come across as well. There are actually differences between a, in, an, an English CV that is used for the American market, for the British market, or the Lebenslauf, 
in German for the German labor market, okay? And please let me know in the comments if you get confused by everything that I'm saying here, because obviously these terms are really confusing at point at some point. So when you are applying in America, and th this happens really often when I'm working with American clients, they send me their CV, I take a look at it, and I think, oh my God, <laughs> the differences are so severe. I really need to work with this client because your CV is not going to help you here on the German labor market. And the reason behind that is because the, the information that the German labor market or that the people, that the companies and employers are looking for in the German companies are um, really different from the German, from the English version. So let's dive into, into an example. Yeah. So I have this one client from America and he sent me his CV and he wants to work in Germany. Okay. So what is happening here? So normally I get the name and the title of the position that this person is um, interested in or even the latest position that this person has had. So this is something that I don't come across often when I read German Lebensläufe. The German Lebenslauf normally doesn't really include the position that you are aiming for. You can include that because nowadays the trend goes more towards English style CVs. And I'll come to that in a minute. Yeah, because there are certain aspects that the Germans are trying to implement in the German labor market nowadays. However, it's not so bad. And it's not really it, it it's not, yeah, a disadvantage if you don't write the the aimed position. Yeah, if you don't write that down, if you don't write underneath your name, what kind of position you're looking for. That's not an issue. But when I see an American CV that is aimed for an American CV in uh, America, then you will always find these titles. Yeah. Then the next thing that I come across that I find really strange is that they normally in the English version just write the city uh, where they are living in, the city and maybe the country. Yeah, but that's nothing that we do. We write actually the entire address. Yeah, so it's an official letter. It's an of that's why we're also, and this is the difference as well, we write down the date and we sign each of our documents. We sign our cover letter in Germany. We sign our CV in Germany. That's something that you don't do when you are applying for the American market or the British market, for example. So, and we write down the address. So basically for the address, we need the street name and also the house number. And then obviously your zip code. Um, and then it, then, then it goes on with the, with the city. Yeah. And obviously you can also include your country if you are applying from abroad. Okay. Then something that is very typical and that is um, similar in both, in both markets is that you are using a phone number and also your email address. With that being said, always use a phone number that is mostly used by you. So a phone number that you're answering, yeah? It doesn't really help if you give me your house phone number, so the landline, and you are never there, okay? Then another aspect that is very typical for the American market and not so much of a topic in Germany is an objective. So on the top of the CV, you normally find a little text that is, it could be something like a summary where you're talking about you, yeah, or you're talking about your objective or you're talking about your profile a little bit within two or three sentences maybe, yeah. And that is something that is not so typical in Germany, but it gets more interesting nowadays when you take a look at modern style CVs, modern style Lebensläufe, for example, yeah, then we have this little section nowadays and you can go with that. You can try that and get a lot of um, interesting and helpful examples from the American labor market because in the American labor market, this is really, really typical to have this objective, yeah, writing what you're aiming for. And then, and this is a really big difference again, 
when it comes to your experience, your work experience, for example, the Americans list a lot of things. Yeah, they they use maybe they they use first of all they use highlights of their career, and then so highlights I mean specific steps in their career, specific positions, but then they go more into detail and underneath the position they write either in bullet points or even in sentences what they have done there and this takes up a lot of space and that now explains why the CVs have two to three pages in the American market or in the British market as well right because it really you you need more space if you are explaining your positions in such a detailed manner in Germany however it's really important that we have no gaps in our CV, okay, in our Lebenslauf, which basically means we are not only highlighting, well, we are, we are focusing on the highlights, obviously, and might want to extend the information on that. However, German recruiters are really focused on the gaps in between. So if you, for example, have a, whenever there is a time frame that is that exceeds three months, the recruiter wants to know what happened in that time. And if you don't explain that on the CV or if you don't explain that on your, on your cover letter, the recruiter is definitely going to ask you during the job interview if you even get to that point. Yeah, if they see a CV. So if we as a recruiter receive CVs and we see massive amounts of gaps, then unfortunately your CV or your application won't be considered anymore. It just simply straight goes to the bin. In America, this is different. People just highlight important positions that are related to the position that you are applying for. And that and also includes that you can have many gaps. It doesn't really matter, yeah? But in Germany, be aware they will ask you about the gaps and what you've done in between because they want to know whether you've been a couch potato just watching Netflix all day or whether you have during that period when you weren't employed have been um, increasing your skills by taking a language class or volunteering or just um, basically um, updating your skills in a specific field that is helpful for your future job, okay? So basically, when I take a look at a, as a German recruiter, as I consider myself, and I receive an American CV and I see all of this information, I really get overwhelmed because there is so much text that I see in this document and some of them really use um, font sizes of eight point, which is really, really, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to read and it's really hard on my eyes. And that's why it's really difficult. And I would think about, mm, I don't really want to consider that because this person has not really realized what the differences are between an ACV in the American labor market and ACV in the German labor market. Okay, so basically it means that you are looking to shrink all of that information down for particular positions, okay? You can describe that a little bit, but don't have five bullet points for each of the individual um, experience positions that you've had, okay? And um, now let me take a look also. Um, something else that is, that is, a difference and that is something that the Germans can still learn from people that are for example applying in America and the Americans. Americans use powerful verb, verbs, right? So they are using something like accomplished and um, achieved and um, I have um, I have um, eliminated costs in that field, or I have decreased costs in this field for, for the project X, Y, and so on. So Americans have a word, have a, a form, a manner of speaking that is that showcases a lot of self-confidence. And Germans are a little bit more reserved, 
right? So we are not so much into the face when it comes to powerful verbs. However, I would always recommend Germans to do that because obviously when you are applying, you want to think about you are great, the company is great, let's be great together, okay? And that is something that you should think about and consider when writing your application, especially if you are writing an application for the German labor market in English with the German standards, yeah? Think about these powerful verbs that are out there that the Americans are using already. And um, now I'm just uh, thinking about all of the different aspects that you might want to consider as well. So, um, <laughs> because obviously I've taken some notes and I just wanted to want to make sure that I don't forget anything. Uh, when would you use a CV, for example? Well, obviously, an American-style CV is something that you want to use when you're, for example, applying in America for scientific jobs. When you're um, applying for jobs for, and you're going for universities, for example. A resume is something that you want to use when you go abroad to America or to Great Britain and you are applying for a job within the industry and not in the research field, okay? This is just the one pager, okay? In Germany, you want to use a Lebenslauf or you could also write CV or curriculum vitae in English, however, according to the German standard, okay? So always keep that in mind. What is the employer? Is the employer German? Is sitting in Germany, Austria, or Switzerland, then go along with the standards of the German Lebenslauf, okay? So you can use a CV because you're writing it in English. However, think about it. Don't be so extensive on all of the details of the different positions that you've had, for example, and stick to the one to two pages, okay? So the Lebenslauf in Germany, we only want to have one to two pages and not more. Whenever I see and whenever I receive applications, so the very first version of my clients, um, it's, it always exceeds two pages. And I don't get why, because many of my clients, I think I only had one, no, maybe two people that have worked with me who were applying for universities, yeah, positions with universities. Everybody else is applying for jobs in the industry. And that basically means that you should not extend these two pages, yeah? Always keep in mind that Steve Jobs, for example, had a one pager, yeah? The shorter, the better. <laughs> okay, so, and then also one more thing. Something that is really important in Germany is, again, that you are signing your documents. You are signing the cover letter. You're signing the CV. And you're putting down the date. And always think about that the date on the cover letter and the CV should match, okay? And then something else that is a, a big difference are the the pieces of information that German employers are looking for, but that are never asked in the English speaking world, that are never asked in, the, in America, that are never asked in Great Britain, for example. So in America, in Great Britain, you would never ask for your age, for your uh, sex, for your, um, for your marital status, whether you have kids, for your religion, yeah? However, References are really, really common in the English speaking world. And they are, we are having a trend towards including more references nowadays in Germany as well. However, I told you about that um, in a couple of, yeah, in one of the episodes before that if you don't, what we are using is more kind of like certificates, yeah, job certificates. And um, the there are, certain aspects that we include. So when it comes, for example, to the picture, in Germany, employers might ask you for sending a picture, a photo of you, yeah? Um, so an application picture. And um, that is something that is not common at all 
in the English speaking world. And the trend in Germany goes more towards not having a picture due to the fact that it might be discriminatory. Okay, and Edin is here, hi. And um, well, basically, it's up to you whether you want to use a photo or not. However, think about that. With many companies, you have a platform where you are applying. So in this platform, when you are applying, you basically plug in all of the information that you have on your CV into that platform. And if that platform is asking you for a picture, then you need to have a picture ready. And it shouldn't be a picture of you on the beach. Yeah, it should be a picture <laughs> that is, um, it has a special, format again because obviously everything in germany has a specific format yeah so this this application picture has a specific format as well and you want to look formal in that picture okay and um the personal information let's dive into that so personal information that we give out on our cd in germany is um for example that you are um telling them your date of birth one of the clients asked me, but isn't that age discrimination again? Hmm. So maybe the trend will go towards not using that. However, this is something that a German Lebenslauf, the standard looks like. You're including your birthday and the place of birth. You're including, um, for example, um, people can include their sex, they can include their um, marital status, they can include what whether they have kids or not, and you can include what kind of nationality you're having and what kind of religion you're having, yeah, the confession that you have. And um, the thing is that I always recommend my clients to include at least the nationality because obviously it will help the employer to find out, okay, do I need to organize a visa for this employee or not? And um, if you have a visa already, then you can write that in brackets, okay? Um, so, and um, then let's take a look. Yeah, obviously the length is different. Yeah, so in Germany, we don't exceed two pages. And then with regards to the references, in Germany, we go more with job certificates, yeah? However, you could also go with the references, for example, that you can include in your LinkedIn profile. And you can do that now if you already have, if you're still having your job, go and talk to your colleagues and ask them whether you can write them a ref recommendation, a reference on their LinkedIn profile and then ask them to do the same for you, okay? And ask suppliers or people that you're working with, okay? Um, okay, so, and then, um, now let's one more time repeat what the difference is between a CV and a resume. So both, obviously, in for the English world basically in the american labor market in the great britain in great britain you don't use any photos the cv has two to three pages the resume is only one page okay so however in germany always stick to two pages okay so and if you have any questions with regards to that let me know and um aiden is asking a question so hi how much does it cost writing a cv and a letter to a job, so a cover letter, I assume. Well, basically, it depends on your time. <laughs> well, if you, um, it, it depends on the time that you want to write that, right? Because, so if you are asking that because you think that I'm writing it for you, that's something that I don't do. Normally, what my clients are doing, they send me their documents and we go through them and I will tell them, okay, you need to improve this, you can improve that, that's the German standard, and maybe you want to consider adjusting your CV so that the German employers will consider your application documents. And then the next question is, and how much it pay to a person who promised to find job for me? Well, that actually depends on the person that you're looking for. Because if you are looking to work with a recruiting agency, for example, they have their own terms. And sometimes it means that the future company is paying that for you. Um, so your future company, or if you are, yeah, talking to a person that is finding the job for you, 
it basically depends on what this job is worth to you, right? <laughs> that could cost anything. And um, so if a person is going out there, so what you are talking about is basically the job of a recruiting agent. Yeah, a recruiting agent would normally, if you are a high talent, they would approach you. Yeah, that is something that happens when you open your mailbox and you receive an email from a headhunter and this headhunter sees Oh, okay, so you have this qualification and we really want you for this particular job. So the headhunters go out there and they will find you if you are this high potential profile. Yeah. Um, if you are working with an agency and you want your CV included in that, then I, I actually don't know what the costs are because that's something that I don't do, but um, colleagues of mine do, yeah? So I'm not a recruiting agency. When I am working with my clients, for example, it is in that case that I help them land their dream, dream job, yeah? So I kind of like enable them to land the dream job on their own. So my clients are interested in working in Germany they come to me, I take a look at what they have and I help them improve their documents. I help them improve, uh, for example, pre their preparation for a job interview because I do mock job interviews with them. Yeah. And then it is up to them that they land their dream job. And that is really valuable because obviously the client then knows, oh, I have done it myself. Yeah. I have done it myself. Well, obviously I got help with it from Lisa. However, it's basically my work, yeah? And you can be proud of your work. And um, normally when you are um, looking for a recruiting agency, then you should look for recruiting agencies here in Germany, because obviously a recruiting agency kind of look for potentials out there that are in the international global market. However, they, um, they don't know who is willing to come to Germany, right? So, this is something that you can find through the um, through job search um, engines, and um, you're now writing exactly. I want to know how much they can make with recite a programmer from India. Just rough estimate. I don't know because I don't do that. But it basically depends on. So for you, sometimes what they do is that they take a percentage, or they are asking the 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 future employee and the future company that they have to pay have to pay the amount both and i don't i actually don't know how much that is and it really depends on what kind of recruiting agency you're working with however i would be really really careful to um, look into the details of that contract if they give you one yeah because normally um, recruiting agencies here in Germany that are looking for high potential profiles, they would never ask the, the, um, the employee to pay the money because obviously you are the good that is being traded. Yeah. So that basically means that, that the company is supposed to pay for, for you to, that the, so the company that you are supposed to work with in the future will pay the recruiting agency because they have found you. Okay. So you need to be really careful. However, if you're, for example, working um, with a recruiting agent, then it's up to you how much you would, would, would want to spend, yeah? Well, my dream job would probably be worth to me more than $10,000, I don't know, yeah? So it basically depends on you, how much you are willing to pay to enter the German labor market and to, to really land that dream job of yours, yeah? However, always take a look at the testimonials, yeah? And take a look at recommendations about that company and whether they have actually experience in recruiting people from India, as you say, uh, whether they have experience in recruiting programmers from India, for example, yeah? So that is something that I would highly recommend for you because if they don't have any, any, any testimonials, it, it sounds just really strange. And I have seen people from not only India, but also from other countries that have come to Germany on terms that I thought that sounds like human trafficking. Yeah, because if you have to give so much in order to enter this German labor market, then this is really strange. However, if you want to do it on your own, 
Yeah. And if you wanted to work with me, for example, and let me help you enable you to um, to reach that and land that dream job of yours where you're using your own strength. Well, then you can apply for my 12 week program and this 12 week coaching program costs about 3000 euros. Yeah. So this is something that I take, but I work with my clients week by week. So they have access to me every week and um, I, I support them along the entire job application process. However, let me get that clear again. I'm not a recruiting agency. So I don't go into the company and contact the company to give them your CV. This is something that you do on your own. I just help you find the right people and the right companies that you are interested in working with, okay? So be really, really careful when you come across recruiting agencies and um, take a look at um, testimonials and not just testimonials of the companies that they're working with, but the people that they are actually recruiting and headhunting, okay? So I hope that helped you and always keep in mind how much is your dream job in your dream country worth to you, okay? All right. Well, thank you very much. And I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you again next week. Thank you and bye-bye.